What do you think of the American education system? It was the model many countries tried to follow. With an annual budget of $1 trillion per year, it is definitely the most expensive educational system in the world. However, is it the best? The dream for many children in the developing countries has been to learn the American way. With great attention paid to every student and have the chance to excel in sports and activities, it is a luxury not everyone can have. Sherry, our producer, grew up in Taiwan and started her first year in a class with over 60 students. It was so crowded, some students had to take afternoon classes because there was not enough classrooms. And asking questions was not allowed in some classes. But no one complained. Everyone understood that just having the opportunity to learn is a great blessing. The equal education opportunities gave people not only hope for a better life, but also lifted many from poverty to success. I can tell you of the achievements of many Chinese scientists, politicians, artists, and musicians. However, I don't think they succeeded because of the educational system. I think they succeeded because they worked hard, appreciated education, and made the best use of what they learned. Imagine not being allowed to question what you were told. No group projects and discussions. Thusly, how difficult it is for the children to grow up and face the real world. However, you can't deny that whatever formula they fed the students, that educational system was the backbone of Taiwan's fast-paced economic growth in the 60s. The children not only survived through the system, they brought the high-tech boom in the 80s. Every component under the keyboard you are typing are either made in China or Taiwan. But what has our high-priced education produced? America ranks 37th in math, with China on top, followed by Singapore at number two, Chinese Taipei at third, Hong Kong at fourth, and even Macau ranks seventh. However, we can at least say that is a proof that our students have the freedom to choose. They get to choose what they want to do versus following the pattern to do what the parents or teacher expect of them, right? Actually, I'm not sure. Our producer said when she was in primary school, some students would just disappear. Even though the education was free, some parents could not afford books or uniforms. Some needed their kids to help with work. And during that time, going to school was a privilege, not an obligation. So if you don't show up for school, well, that's your choice. So do students in America have that freedom? Not quite so, according to this story I found. Diane Tran, a 17-year-old honor student in Texas, was sent to jail for missing school. After her parents divorced, Diane had to struggle helping her younger siblings with a full-time job and a part-time job. When she missed more than the 10 days allowed, the judge sentenced her to one day in jail and a fine of $100. This story caught my attention because we recently made two films, Girl Indigo and How to Graduate College at 17 and Finish High School at 18. Diane looked very much like our volunteer Valerie. Actually, in 2012, when Diane was struggling with two jobs, Valerie enrolled both in high school and community college. A judge warned her in April to stop missing so much school, Tran recently missed again. She works part-time at a wedding venue and full-time at a dry cleaners. And she goes from job to job from school. She stays up till 7 o'clock in the morning doing her homework. But the judge says the case is bigger than Tran. People there, and if you let one of them run loose, what are you going to do with the rest of them? Let them go too? 
Diane was an honor student taking lots of AP classes and doing great in school, even while having to work two jobs and helping her siblings. I'm sure she didn't want to miss school, but when you only have 24 hours a day, what can you do? Can you imagine what a criminal record will do to a 17-year-old girl? Diane's story has a happy ending. The judge waived the fines and agreed to clear her record. But what about the many others who were not so lucky? Is Diane's case the proof that our educational system has failed our children? To be honest with you, the education system in America is not perfect. But I wouldn't call that a failed system. No one can deny there are flaws in the system. But unbeknownst to most, there are also ways to get around it. Many super intelligent children have jumped over the traditional school system via homeschooling. Like Shoyan Oh, who finished his PhD at 18. And by 21, he got his MD after graduating from the University of Chicago. However, not everyone can afford homeschooling. Diane Tran took AP classes in high school. That is one shortcut many high achievers can take. A lot of people do not know. It was not the AP courses that can be transferred as college credit. It is a result of the AP exam that can be used for college credits. So that can be your big shortcut. If you could not take the AP courses, but you were good enough to pass the AP exam, sign up for the exams, prepare for it, pass with flying colors, and send the results to the community college of your choice. Believe it or not, you might just complete half of your associate degree. Of course, almost every college requires you to take at least 12 units at their school before they can award you the associate degree. But what happens if you have to work, do not have a car, or just can't afford to study full time? But please, do not let those stop you. Take Valerie's example. She took four classes during summer. All except one were completed through distance learning. And the school she picked, Coastline Community College, a public college in the California Community College system. 75% of their students have never even visited their campus. But their degree and courses are recognized by both University of California and California State Universities. Please note that Valerie used her high school summer break to complete these courses. If you can find a school near you, take the four classes. That may be the only college life you have before you graduate. And one other thing most people do not know. No matter how hard you study in those AP classes and how great you did in the AP exams, some schools will not use the AP results to fulfill graduation requirements. They will recognize the credits and consider you a junior when you enroll as a freshman, but they will still make you take those classes. However, in California, the UC and Cal State Universities cannot say no to the junior college credit. However, for the ones who really can't afford to finish high school, the current system has another fix for you. GED. The age requirement may be different by state, but two volunteers working for our nonprofit organization took the GED and passed. One at 15 and the other at 13. Once they passed, they were allowed to take any community college classes without high school approval. However, there is one downside of getting the GED before graduating high school. High school students can take any community college classes for free, at least in California. As long as they have signed a waiver from their high school and get permission from the community college. Students with GED are considered already graduated from high school. They can take any classes in community college, but they have to pay $35 per unit in 2016. However, if you qualify as low income, the government will pick that up and even offer you a living allowance. 
You see, getting an associate college degree is not as hard as you think. And with the shortcut and proper planning, you can graduate with one online class and three summer classes. For many college freshmen spending the summer doing nothing, enroll in community college. Transfer all your AP courses and then take a few classes during the long summer break. And this will help you decide better what you really want to major in at college. You may really surprise your college counselor with an associate degree. Imagine how much better your resume will look when applying to a campus job or summer internship with an associate degree. It is not as easy to fulfill the major requirement, but there is another shortcut. Many schools allow the waiver of certain courses by taking the CLEP exams. Like you see in this transcript, marketing was waived. How much does it cost? $90. Of course, I will suggest you buy a practice exam and study hard. If you are really good with computers, take a Microsoft Office exam. If you pass, you not only instantly become a Microsoft certified professional, you can try to transfer that as college credit. ACE offers such service. And as you can see here, that was also used to waive the last graduation requirement. So Valerie got to enjoy her high school life with the marching band and the orchestra while she used her summer for college. And she got her associate degree in 2013 but her high school diploma in 2014. You know I can take online community college classes and get a college degree instead of going through high school. And hopefully I can make a bigger impact. So you see, two girls about the same age and looking very much alike had to face similar life challenges, as Valerie actually also worked two part-time jobs. But with better planning and a smart use of the shortcuts, she beat the system. Actually, she was awarded a Coastline Scholarship as both a high school student and distance learner. Just like everything else in life, we may not be able to change the system, but we can find ways to work it out. I don't know how many of you are or know someone who wants to succeed but lacks the resources. If you're willing to share your story in the comments section, maybe we can help you. Every case is different, but the Skills Enrichment Learning Foundation has pledged $1,000 to pay for CLEP exams for someone who needs it. We will contact the qualified candidate to verify their needs and eligibility. Hopefully, a small gift can be the start of something great. This is Ken Peters. Thank you for watching.